I want to preach to you today out of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, chapter number 5. Really quick, go with me to verse number 7. And I'm going to take you to a couple places um, in Numbers as well. We'll go in 21, we'll go in 32. Uh, but 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7 will sum up what I'm preaching today. And I want to read it, and it is read as follows. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Tell your neighbor, we, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by what we know God knows and not by what I see. If you go back to the Old Testament and you get in the book of, of Numbers, um, go to 21, chapter number 21 in the book of, of Numbers. And I want to go to verse number four. I'm just going to pick a couple of places here just to kind of build the foundation quickly. Uh, verse number four. They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. I want to go to chapter number 32 now and this is it. We've just read a verse in each one of these. Uh, 32 in verse, verse number nine. Ooh, thank you Lord. God moved in the house today already, huh? For when they went up into the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord God had given them. Look at that. They went up unto the valley of Eshcol. They saw the land. They saw it. And they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord God had given them. I want to preach for a few moments this morning. We walk by faith and not by sight. Tell your neighbor it's by faith and not by sight. Father, we love you and thank you for the precious word. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you for grace. God, we draw strength from you. Lord, I just pray you give us stamina, give us hope, give us help, Lord. Give us another good touch of that precious Holy Ghost. God, every day that we live, Lord, just touch us, touch us, touch us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for touching me. Touch me again and again and again, Lord. I'll never mind. Thank you, God, for your touch. I'll take all I can get. In the name of Jesus, let everybody say amen and amen. Let's, let's thank God for the word today. Let's thank God for the word. As we look in the Bible in Luke 21 and verse 25, there's a common theme that you're going to find as we preach the final moments of this service today to be tactful. And I say that because I want to, from a time standpoint, go as fast as I can to get everything that I feel God has, has given me, but to be impactful as well. And that is to fit everything in in a short amount of time. The Bible says in Luke 21 and 25, and there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. When I speak on we walk by faith and not by sight, there is a collection of scripture that you can pull, and as you bring the value to some scripture, and you see that it's very apparent that in the day and the hour in which we're living in, we see the distress of nations. We see the perplexity and we also see the upheaval in our weather and in our atmosphere. When you also see signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, when you see all of these things begin to happen, we understand that it is a mechanism for Christians to be able to forecast things are really starting to wind up. Or some people might say for them, they're winding down. I believe for the people of God, things are winding up. And for people outside of the will of God, it's winding down. Acts 2, 18, and all my servants and all my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Acts 2, 19, I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor of smoke. I believe in the last days in which we're living, the enemy is doing everything he can at every angle and every aspect of life to bring about a level of discouragement against God's people. 
I say that because it easily ties in with the fact that, hey, saints, we walk by faith and not by sight. We do not walk by what we see. We do not walk by what we feel. We do not walk by what we taste in the atmosphere. We walk by faith. As I continue to build on this message, I want you to understand that there are things that we're going to see that could quite possibly potentially breed discouragement if we're not careful. When we see all the signs that determine to forecast that he is coming back quickly and that in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. That fast it's going to happen. We will be caught up together in what the word of God calls a rapture when you begin to really tear apart what that word harpozo really means. When you look in the word of God, you'll find that there are places where you will see that discouragement is going to come upon people the closer that we get to his return. That word discourage means to deprive of confidence, hope, or spirit. If there's ever been a time when you look across politically, governmentally, from a church standpoint to people in general, I've never seen people lose their confidence, their hope, and just lose spirit. We are in those days where it's happening quicker and faster and more rapidly than we've ever seen it before. I wouldn't go to church if I didn't expect God to move. I'd have to drag myself in there and tell myself, you are going to bless the Lord. You are going to praise the Lord. You are going to worship God. You know, when you pastor 30 plus years, do you think there's not times that my body doesn't feel up to par? Do you think that my mind hasn't been distracted by messes? Do you think that I haven't gone through things personally and my family has gone through things? But listen, I'm not walking by what I see. Simply put, it is a message to the church to get to the place where you get that hunger back that you once had. You get the fire back that used to be prevalent. You get the zeal back that somehow has been lost. You get your burden back. Let the burden start with your family. Get a burden for your kids. Get a burden for their friends. Get a burden for your family, extended family. And when you begin to do that, you'll have a burden for the rest of the world. It will come naturally when you get a burden for the Great Commission that people are going to be saved and not left behind. There is discouragement everywhere. I've never seen it like it in my life. The spirit is just gone from people. Their hope is just gone from people. Their confidence is lacking. People need to understand that you have got to get to the place where you really recognize what's going on. That there is an enemy on the loose. That there is a devil that is in this atmosphere that is trying to work against God's people and everything that God wants to do to bless his people and move them forward. But I come to tell you today there's still a remnant of people. There's always been a remnant. There's always been one in a lit den of lions. There's There's always been three in a fire. There's always been a Moses that'll bring them up out of Egypt. There's always been a Samson. There's always been a David. There's always been a Jephthah. There's always been somebody that got hungry. That said, I'm not living like this anymore. I don't have to take this anymore. Let's drop off. The discouragement. Come on. (laughs) I'm going to sing it out of here. I'm going to preach it out of here. I'm going to praise it out of here. I'm going to worship it out of here. I'm telling you, saints of God, drop it off. Drop it off. There is so much mess that the enemy's tried to get people in, and it can be discouraging at times. But you cannot get discouraged. I want to grab my Bible really quick, and I just want to throw this in. Thank you, God. (laughs) Without a ribbon in place, my hand put it to Galatians chapter 6. Is that not incredible? Verse number seven, be not deceived. God is not mocked. 
For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If all you think about is discouraging thoughts, you'll reap discouragement. If all you think about is how bad it is, you'll reap badness. If all you think about it, oh, it's Monday, you'll reap a Monday. But if you start thinking God is good no matter how I feel, no matter what it looks like, no matter what I got to go through, no matter how I've been criticized, no matter how I've been made fun of, I will not get discouraged because I know God is in here somewhere and I will reap what I sow. Woo! Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on. We're going to reap what we sow. Come on, let's sow a praise in the Let's show a praise in the house. Woo! Be not deceived, the word of God says. Don't you think for a minute God's going to honor you for going out of your way and going to church? He's going to honor you for studying your Bible. He's going to study. He is going to bless you for getting in your prayer closet. Even if you have to go in there and sit when times you're praying, you feel like they go no higher than the ceiling. Just get in there and sit until you feel God move. Whatever you do, take some time. Don't get discouraged. Keep reading your Bible. Get out of the generations and get over there into Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and read some of the epistles and read what Philemon told them and Titus told them and Jude told him get in there in first John what what the beloved John had to say saints of God do not get discouraged do not get weary and well doing for if you faint not we will reap because there's a new season coming saints of God come on we've got to get our encouragement back we got to get our push back we got to get our strength back come on come on come on come on come on you look in the word of God and find discouragement in the Old Testament, it's going to mean to curtail, to send trouble, to vex people. That's what that is. Saints of God, we are living in those days. It's not always easy to go to prayer and go out of your way. It's not always easy to go to church. It's not always easy to read your Bible. It's not always easy to pray. If you look at it in the flesh. What did he just say? You heard it. If you're doing all of that in your flesh and you do it in a fleshly mentality, it's going to get tough. You're going to get discouraged. But I don't go to desiring to read my Bible in the flesh. It comes up out of my spirit. I want to go to church. That comes up out of my spirit. I want to get into my prayer closet. It comes up out of my spirit. I want to praise and worship. My flesh says no, but my spirit says go on and bless the Lord. My flesh says no, but the spirit says go on and worship the Lord. Saints of God, get your strength back. Get your encouragement back. Want a great marriage? Get up and do something about it. Hallelujah. Let me just preach to the back wall. So no one takes this personal and leaves the church because I know he was preaching to me. You better believe I am. Let me tell you, if you're going to keep a nice house, you've got to vacuum that house. Thank God my wife's coming home at 1.30. Not that, that has anything to do with vacuuming, but we've had to do a lot of that this week. Amen. Carly, she's washed clothes, she's made dinner, and she's picked up dinner. Hallelujah. I've picked up dinner 1 o'clock this morning. I heard the vacuum running. I said, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You know, if we wouldn't have dusted and we wouldn't have cleaned up the dishes and I wouldn't have put some Dawn dish liquid in my coffee cup, if I hadn't taken an old wash rag and washed that out with hot water and dry it off and put it back where it belongs, it'd still be sitting there. And I'm telling you, saints of God, this is exactly like your relationships get, like your marriages get, like your families get, when you don't get in there and you don't work at it. Because faith without works is, well, I believe the Lord's going to touch it. Well, he's asking you to get in there and do something about it. Oh, I see it sinking down, but sit behind them seats. Sit back up here. Let me talk to you. I'm telling you, saints of God, prayer still works. Don't you get discouraged. Fasting still works. Don't you get discouraged. Praying together still works. Reading your Bible together. Oh, that's a good one. It still works. 
Amen. I was on the phone just the other day with Jill. She was talking to me. She said, I can't wait to get home and wrap my arms around you. I said, thank you, Jesus. Well, I tell you what, that was encouraging. I could, I could see it. I could see her running across snow and just jumping into my arms. Come on, somebody. And I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm being serious. You got to picture yourself praising God. Picture yourself worshiping God. Picture yourself being encouraged. Picture your family getting better. Picture your kids coming in. Picture them praising God and shouting up and down the aisles and running to an altar and weeping and crying. Picture yourself up the road. You want to tell yourself, I see us in the future, baby. And it looks much better than it does right now. We walk by faith. We walk by faith. Sometimes if I don't like where I'm at, I just look up the road a little bit. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody in here. The enemy wants to discourage the church. And both places in the book of Numbers that I drew your attention in the Old Testament, you know what they did? They got to looking at their circumstance. Well, the land has wore us out. And we're just discouraged because of it. It's what they saw. It's where they went. Joshua and Caleb are the only ones that made it into the promised land. Why? Because they're the only one that came back and saw the victory and not the giants. They saw the great and not the size of their enemy. It's how you see things. Come on. It, get up out of there. I don't, I'm not talking about your seat right now. That, that, that's speaking uh, spiritually and hypothetically. Get up out of there. See yourself better than what's going on right now. It's not always going to be this way. You're not always going to feel this way. You're not always going to feel stuck. You're not always going to feel my back's against the wall. You're not always going to feel I'm never going to get out of this. You have counted God out of the equation. Ask old Daniel what he said. Said, let me pray about it. Ask me Shaq and Shadrach and a to go what they said let us pray about it oh you better jump up and push your neighbor and say wait till I pray about it we have young people we have young people that are sitting in this section we have young people that are sitting right here some of them have notebooks and they're taking notes and, 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 and I'm thankful for that. I'm, I'm grateful. It's good to see that. Let me tell you about these young, some of these young people that are sitting here. Their parents really don't care for them coming to this church. Ain't nobody going to help me now. Because they're a tongue-talking church and they're spiritual and they let the Holy Ghost move and they get in there and lift their hands up and they praise the Lord. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. And see, we come to church on our own and no one impedes us from coming and no one keeps us and no one dogs us for coming to a church like this. Come on, what's our excuse? Because I see these young people that are not always favorable when it comes to people pushing them, but they come and get ready anyhow and come to church. Come on, somebody. Young, I just, I wanted to get down here and say, young people, don't you get discouraged because no one's pushing you to go to church. I had to do it and you can do it too. You just keep on, keep on. Keep on. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me tell you something, saints of God. It's easier to talk about somebody than it is to lift them up. It's easier to dog them than it is to encourage them. And it's easier to go into a stupor of discouragement than it is to stand up and be different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's easier just to throw the mud instead of get some cleaner and take it off. <laughs> Come on, saints. Stay with me. Stay with me. Some things that God doesn't take out of your way, just be like Paul and say, God, your grace is sufficient. You don't know how many times I've had to pray that. I've had to say, okay, God, if you're not going to take this, then will you give me some more grace? Because if I got to live with this, I need more grace. And he does. Oh, that's another message. 
I might preach a little bit tonight if the Lord will help us. But let me tell you something, saints. Don't you get discouraged. I don't care what it looks like. I, I don't, whatever is not changing in your life, ask God for grace over it. Whew. Come on, Lord. There's a few things that I want to draw attention to because I'm really grateful. Spiritual gifts never get old. All these years we've been saved. Wow. Thank God for the Spirit and thank God for the gifts. Thank God for the administrative gifts. Thank God for the fruits of the Spirit. Never gets old to have church, fellowship, possess the fruits of the Spirit, operate in the gifts of the Spirit. God gave us a great gift, gave us a great gift on a tree. His son, the most precious gift of all. If you are discouraged, fall back in love with Jesus. That's it. I wish I had maybe 10 people that would clap their hands at least on that one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Just fall back in love with Jesus. Philippians 1, 20 to 23, it states according to my earnest expectation. This was personally a faith statement made that according to my earnest expectation and hope. Hope yourself right out of that. I'm hoping this is going to change. I'm hoping this is going to get better. And the more you hope and the more you pray, God starts giving you avenues to get out of it. <laughs> Didn't he say that there are things that are just common that are going to happen to us, but God will with the temptation make a way to escape? Yes, he will. I believe you have to get your desire back if you're going to fend off discouragement, a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing, praying, anticipating something to happen. That's your desire. You've got to get your desire back. Oftentimes, if desire is gone, discouragement settles in. I have been multitudes in my life to prisons, not because I got in trouble and I'm, I'm, I'm not being proud. I, I, I'm, I, don't, I mean that respectfully. I went to them because I went to minister. And I never walked through a corridor of cells where I heard singing and joy and clapping and everybody having a great time. It's quiet, it's somber, it's hateful, it's mean, it's mean-spirited. Come on, why is it? Because they took a man or a woman and they put her in a cell and they pulled her hope from her. You're not going to have breakfast with your family. You're not going to raise your kids. You're not going to see your parents. You're going to get one phone call. We'll let you know when. And you're going to eat what we tell you you're going to eat. You have taken someone's desire away from them. And it's the same way when you get into a spiritual prison. Same concept. The enemy knows if he can get your desires, discouragement starts to leak inside the boat. Can I keep preaching? That's why that scripture in Philippians is so powerful. My earnest expectation. I have sat around at least 20 of them. The worst. They, they didn't take me up on the hill. They took me to the lower one. The brick houses. Where they went in and they were murderers and lifers. And they sent me in a room with 25 to 30 of them. And one guard and they set us in a circle and they said, Pastor, we just want you to preach to them and give them some hope. Amen. You cannot imagine what their hope is. It's very minimal. Because their expectation has been stolen. How many of us sit in this church right now? We're free as can be, but minimized because we're in some spiritual prison. And God wants to give us freedom today. God wants to bring freedom to us. In closing, Colossians 3, 2, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Set your affection on things above. Set your affection on things above. Set your affection on, there is nothing down here that up there can't fix. Come on. 
Proverbs 13 and 12, hope deferred. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. Today, today, this service, not tonight, not tomorrow, today. Yes, there's people that have habits that have formed that I'm always going to be this way and I like being this way and I'm not going to change for anybody and I'm just going to stay this way. And if you continue to believe that way and make statements like that, it's never going to change for you. But you need to let God break you down. That old yoke needs destroyed off your life. That old mindset needs to go. You just need to fully submit to God and say, I'm going to make my mind up. And I'm not talking to people that aren't saved necessarily. I'm talking to people in this church that have some stuff they need to let go of. Come on, Jesus. I have been in church all my life. I didn't always act churchy, but somewhere, somehow, God made a way for me to be in church my entire life. There have been some discouraging times. There has been some times I got, I got let down. I got hurt. Things happen. It's going to happen to everybody. And I've been pastoring for over 30 years now. At the same place, thank you, Jesus, and multiple locations. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Especially when they say, if you go 10 years in one place, God is good. Most go four to six at a minimum. Thank you, God, for what you've done. Here's why I said all that, just to say this. Just sitting down on my couch yesterday and opening up my Bible and just reading was so powerful. I knelt down beside my bed last night after praying with the kids. I went upstairs and I prayed and I said, God, thank you. Thank you for that time today that you and I just got to sit together And I just got in your word. That was so powerful. You never grow up as a Christian. (laughs) You mature, but you never get to the place where I don't need the manual anymore. And you never get to the place where prayer doesn't need to be an option anymore. Or going to church. Just keeps us disciplined. Hallelujah. Saints of God, it's so easy nowadays for discouragement to set in. All you have to do is scroll your phone and access some news app. They'll tell you every discouraging thing on the planet. All you have to do is look at it, and it's one discouragement after another, one theory after another, one person's mindset of what's going to happen. I'm so tired of that. I'm so glad I got this. I know exactly what's going to happen. It's all right here. Come and do what you do. We need a move. How many of you know what that move means? We need a move.